Shalom. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a uh, response to this video I did yesterday. A response to Pastor Ron Wright. The Hebrew Israelites purposely leave out verses. All right. And that's coming from this Christian pastor. Um, and we know the Christians are notorious for leaving out, you know, uh, the law, the prophets, you know, the Old Testament. A lot of them think that they can start their talking points of the Bible in Matthew. All right. Uh, beginning in the New Testament with no understanding of history, prophecy. All right. And um and they have made a mess of the scriptures. Now the Israelites have raised up and the Heavenly Father has put the Holy Spirit, you know, on us, starting with the apostles and elders to preach the true understanding, as well as other Israelite camps. And um, what you see happening is these Christians, all right, are um, flabbergasted. They're hurt. A lot of them are being paid off. All right. And uh, following us around. OK, because they're a garbage religion, which has many splits and denominations. All right. You know, you, it, it's becoming a, a naught. You know, people are leaving the Christian church. It's docile. It's stagnant. It's weak. Anyway, in this video, this guy made a uh, point, you know, bringing out the book of Matthew, the eighth chapter where a centurion begged Yahawashai to heal his servant all right that the centurion because he was a Roman centurion it means that he would have to be in heathen all right so pretty much what I'm going to do is go into some history all right of Israelites in particular the Jews now when we hear the term Jew we have to understand that's a shortened term of Judah all right but since the Babylonian captivity Judah Benjamin and Levi okay who were um, in that captivity of course a few other tribes Judah Benjamin and Levi were just labeled Jews okay so Judah Benjamin and Levi were the ones that were primarily in Judea all right, uh, serving in the temple and uh, so forth when Yahawashai came on the scene. All right, now when Yahawashai came on the scene, who was ruling? The Roman Empire, which, you know, according to prophecy, that would be the fourth beast in Daniel, the seventh chapter. Okay, the, the fourth beast is spoken of in Daniel, the seventh chapter in the seventh verse. All right, all of these beasts, Okay, the Bible pretty much focuses on the Israelites, the chosen seed within these various different captivities. Okay, so when you read the New Testament, okay, the Bible doesn't just throw the Israelites away and then start to put focus on heathen. All right, it's ultimately giving you an insight into what would happen with the Israelites. All right, when the Messiah came on the scene. The contentions between the circumcision, those who were raised in the customs and the uncircumcision, those who weren't raised in the customs, who were looked down upon, looked at as a no people, but started to believe through Yahweh Shai, all right, in the preaching of Yahweh Shai, okay, and through faith, they would be justified, which was uh, ultimately a, uh, that was a big thing. You know, when you look into the culture and mindset of the circumcision and those who were in the temple and the Israelites at that time. OK, that was a big thing. OK, because prior to Yahweh Shai coming onto the scene, you know, Jake was still thinking in a first covenant mindset, which we already broke that covenant. All right. So Yahweh Shai, starting with John the Baptist. All right. Gave, gave us a grace period. He baptized the new high priest, which ultimately is Yahweh Shai. And now it's through him we are brought back to the father. OK, so when you read about when you read the, the, the Gospels, when you read the book of uh, Matthew, all right, uh, Mark, Luke, all right, 
uh, the, the, you know, Paul's epistles, you know, this was during the time where the Roman Empire was ruling the fourth beast. Before that, you had the Greeks, which is the third beast, which is like unto a leopard. All right. And when you go into the history of what happened to the Israelites in that captivity in the book of Maccabees, OK, you get understanding that the Israelites, all right, became engrafted into the Greek culture through Hellenization, even becoming Greeks in religion, speech. OK, so they became heathen Gentiles. So when you read the New Testament, OK, and, and when you read the Bible, make sure you're understanding it from the standpoint. All right. Of uh, prophecy. OK, Daniel gives you the, the vision of these four beasts. OK, Israel would be in captivity within these beasts and a little horn that issue forth from it. So when you read the fourth beast, that's the Roman Empire. OK, now to give you a quick insight before we get into these articles, because you can see the title of this uh, article sent by the beloved brother uh, Ayasha Moth of the Mississippi camp. He sent me these two articles this morning and it sparked me to do this lesson. Uh, Sons of Israel in Caesar's service. Jewish show soldiers. Now we know it's not Jewish. All right. Jews in the Roman military, basically. Okay, Israelites who were soldiers in the Roman military. All right. Now, when you read the Bible, okay, just to give you an example, you notice a lot of these letters start off with what? Romans 1 and 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of the Most High, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Yahweh Shahamashiach, because among these nations where Israel were scattered, okay, you had particular Israelites who turned back to the Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shai, okay, and that happened in Rome and these various different regions that Rome ruled. So to all that be in Rome, be loved of God. Now, is that everybody in Rome? No, I just uh, typed in, you know, uh, on the uh, Bible hub to see what Gil would say or these scholars would say. And they pretty much all saying the same thing. It says to all that be in Rome, these words contain both the inscription of the epistle and the apostles usual salutation as in all his epistles. The inscription of it is not to the Roman emperor. No, he's not speaking to the Roman emperor, nor the Roman Senate, nor all the inhabitants in Rome, but to all the saints Psalms 50 and 5, those who made a covenant, those who were under that first covenant and failed. OK, and who are now under grace to be entered into the second covenant, which is only for the Israelites. Those are the saints. OK, whether rich or poor, bond or free, male or female, Jew or Gentile, without any distinction, being all one in Hamashiach. Now, you notice sometimes it says Jew or Greek. OK, because stemming from that Greek okay uh captivity all right our people started to basically put off the uh the customs of the israelites remember in certain points it wasn't even lawful for them to call themselves jews and we can find that in uh second maccabees the sixth chapter you have to read the maccabees to fully understand what went on with the jews in the greek captivity you can't just skip over all right, hundreds of years of history, okay, and think that you're going to just open the New Testament and understand why these Israelites were being called uncircumcised or Gentiles. So among these nations, all right, where the Jews were, and Yahawashai came on the scene, though you had particular Jews of the circumcision who followed Yahawashai, as Yahawashai went out, all right, you had these particular Gentiles, okay, who were in the Roman system, OK, some high, some low, some slaves, some, you know, as we're going to show you, turning back to the Heavenly Father, the same thing you have happening today. So just because you see the term centurion, which what is a centurion? All right. Strong's G 1543. Picatantarches. 
It says an officer in the Roman army. So as soon as people see that a centurion is mentioned in the Bible, they automatically think that's a heathen. Okay, that's a Roman. Well, yeah, you can be Roman by citizenship, but your nationality would be Israelites. Okay, going back to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who would be scattered through these four beasts in Daniel the seventh chapter. All right, remember I um, brought up, you know, the fact in the book of uh, Zechariah, the first chapter, really quick, when it speaks of these four beasts as well, these four horns. Zechariah chapter 1, just to get to the point. One in eighteen, then lifted up mine eyes and saw, behold, four horns. And the angel, I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, Be these be the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Okay, so it would be through these four beasts and a little horn that issue forth from the fourth beast, which is the revival of the Roman Empire, Babylon, a great NATO and the EU. All right, that would pretty much have control over the Israelites, and we would be in captivity scattered via these different nations okay we know scattered means the diaspora now real quick when you go to romans 1 and 7 to all that be in rome beloved of god called to be saints grace and peace all right from our god all right god our father the god of abraham isaac and jacob and the lord yahweh shah hamashiach now as you can see okay you'll start to notice a trend amongst Paul's writings, okay? And they wrote letters by uh, Acts 15 and 23, and they wrote letters by them after this manner, the apostles and elders, brethren, sent in greeting unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch, in Syria, and Cilicia, okay? So the Gentiles were there, okay? And when you read in Acts the 15th chapter, you're going to notice real quick, The council at Jerusalem, you're going to notice it says when they came to a conclusion, Acts 15 and 19, wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned unto God because Israel will be scattered among the Gentiles. Okay, point blank period. Colossians 1 and 2, unto the church of God which is in Corinth, to them which are sanctified in Yahweh Shah Mashiach, called to be saints. All right. So you had churches that were scattered in these regions as Rome conquered and ruled. OK. You had Israelites there. OK. Second Corinthians one and one. Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Shai by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth. So these are Israelites among these nations which have returned to the heavenly father. Okay, through Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's what it means. We're all one, both Jew and Greek. All right, you notice it just says Greek. Why not Ham? All right, because the Israelites became Greeks in customs going back to the Maccabees. Okay, to uh, Philippians 1 and 1. To, to all the saints in Yahweh Shai, which are at Philippi. So you see the the the... You know, the um, and then here. All right. James one and one. James, a servant of God and of our Lord, Yahweh Shahamashiach to the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad greeting. OK, so here it is. You have these Christians. They'll teach you that all of these letters are to actual heathen. But then James letter is only to the, the, the 12 tribes because they don't have the understanding of the Bible. Peter. All right. What did he say? To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. This is Israelites. Okay? These are Israelites. Okay? Churches that were formed among these nations. So when you see that term, okay, uh, centurion, 
it's an officer in a Roman army. You had Israelites, as we're going to read here, you had Israelites, all right, sons of Israel in Caesar's service, all right, soldiers in the Roman military that were Jews, all right, the participation of Roman Jewish soldiers in the armies of Imperial Rome often goes unrecognized. This is mainly a result of lack of recognition on the part of scholars who wish to use rabbinic sources as the benchmark for Jewish practice in the imperial age. Okay? It is also difficult to identify Jewish soldiers, all right, many of whom had Greek and Latin names unless they are specifically identified as Jews or are found in a Jewish context. All right, such as, and when we say Jewish, we don't, we're not Jewish. We are the Jews. Ish means pretty much pertaining to or, you know, uh, uh, trying to be like. Lord willing, we'll get into that in a lesson. All right, and see, we know which ones are Jews through the spirit. Like when you look up the term centurion, you know, not every centurion that's mentioned in the Bible are uh, Israelites. Okay, but we know through the spirit, through their belief, their faith, all right, in Yahweh Shai, all right, uh, uh, Cornelius was a centurion, right, Cornelius was a centurion, we can read that in Acts the 10th chapter, now, as a matter of fact, let's see if we can pull that up real quick. I'll just pull it up real quick right here. Stay on computer. Give me one second here. We'll pull it up. Dealing with Cornelius, who was an Israelite. Okay. Um, this is Acts 10 and 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. So right here, all right, most people start, stop and say, well, this can't, can't be an Israelite. Because first of all, he's a centurion and he, he, he comes from the Italian band, Italy. But don't you know that there were churches in Italy? All right. You had Jews from Italy here. All right. Acts 18 and 2 and found a certain Jew named Aquila born in Pontus lately come from Italy. So you had Jews in, in these regions. Okay. You had churches being raised in Italy. As a matter of fact. At the end of Hebrews, Hebrews 13 and 24, salute all them that have rule over you and all the saints, they of Italy salute you. So you had churches in Italy. So Cornelius, okay, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. All right. So just like right now, as we're out preaching you could have a, a, a brother who is a high up in the uh, the military of Esau here in America, the new Rome. OK, and he could start to give alms. He could repent. He could start to say, you know what? Damn, what I'm hearing. These, this, I got to help these brothers. Charity covered the multitude of sins. And it also tells you in Acts 13 that all his house is going to be saved. So how is this an Edomite when we know all of the Edomites are going to be destroyed? No, this is an Israelite. You had Israelites in the Roman army. Higher up too. Okay. It says, nonetheless, by using a variety of sources from the period, it is possible to appreciate the depth and breadth of the Jews service in Roman legions from the time of Caesar down to the early 5th century. There were Jews who served as simple as foot soldiers, influential generals like Tiberius, Julius, Alexander, and Jewish, Jewish military units such as Regi, all right, Luade, all right, regardless of the relationship to, ortho, or, to the Orthodox Jews community at, of the time the service of Roman Jews and imperial armed forces must be recognized not all of them repented and was following you know the fact that they were Israelites 
but some of them did. Okay. In the year 69 of the Roman province of Judea was consumed by a three year rebellion that pitted Jewish zealots against the authority of the emperor in the house of Herod. Not only was the revolt a destabilizing factor in the eastern regions of the empire, but it also posed a significant challenge to the new emperor Vespasian. In order to quell the Jewish revolt in his eastern marches, Vespasian resolved to send an army under the command of his son Titus. All right. Yada, yada, yada. Now. Let's see here. That's that. And that's from a book or an article, Sons of Israel and Caesar's Service. All right. Now we're going to go here. Okay. I'm going to go here. History of the Jews in the Roman Empire. The history of the Jews in the Roman Empire traces the interaction of Jews and Romans during a period of the Roman Empire. Their cultures began to overlap in the centuries just before the Christian era. Jews as a part of the Jewish diaspora migrated to Rome and the Roman Europe from the land of Israel, Asia Minor, Babylon and Alexandria in response to economic hardship. All right. Incessant warfare over the land of Israel between the Ptolemaic and Seleucid empires. And what happened? All right. Stemming back to the Ptolemaic and Seleucid empires with the Israelites. Well, you can go to the book of Maccabees. Okay. Because there was the, the Esau was warring with each other. All right. They were, they were warring with uh, Israel. As they came into our land and just, you know, acted an ass. But what pretty much took place with the Israelites at that time? Okay. Pretty much. Israel started to do what? According to the, the, the customs of the heathen. They made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. Okay. Pretty much. Verse 43, yea, many of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. OK, so pretty much the hell that was being put on Jake, you know, they was catching hell. You can read the stories. Eventually, some started to migrate into the Roman Empire. OK. It says uh, in Rome, Jewish communities enjoyed privileges and thrived economically, becoming a significant part of the empire's population. So you had Israelites in the Roman Empire. With jobs, some of them, you know, thrived. So just because you see centurion doesn't mean it's an actual heathen, man. OK. Hell, when Yahawashai uh, uh, died, okay, this is Matthew, let's see, or Mark, yep, Matthew 27 and 54. Now, when the centurion and they that were with him watching Yahawashai saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God, Okay. So that was most likely a Jake. That was an Israelite. Okay. You had centurions. You had Roman soldiers who ultimately repented. Okay. But the, this, will, will this guy bring all of that out? Okay. And remember the friction between the uncircumcision or the circumcision and the uncircumcision is the circumcision looked at those uncircumcised Israelites all right, because remember what happened here in, in, in the book of uh, First Maccabees. Okay. Verse 15, and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the Holy Covenant. So eventually, you know, on down the line, those that kept the customs looked down upon these Israelites who sold out and their children. There was a big friction, man. All right. 
anyway, going back here. Let's see here. And I'll put these two articles in, in post-production. It says, the Roman general Pompey in his eastern campaign established the Roman province of Syria in 64 BC and conquered Jerusalem in 63 BC. Julius Caesar conquered Alexandria, all right, and defeated Pompey, all right. Under Julius Caesar, Judaism was officially recognized as a legal religion. Now, we never practiced no goddamn Judaism. See, what they're doing is trying to insert these fake small hat people into the game. No, we, we, we had Israelites who kept the commandments, all right, and stuck to the temple. You can go back to the Hasmonean dynasty, okay, hey, the Maccabees, to understand that history. All right, Judaism is pretty much <laughs> going back to uh, Kagan Bullen, okay, a uh, Turco Edomite, okay, uh, Amalekite at the end of the day, who uh, pretty much mixed, you know, uh, uh, you know, some stuff from the Torah, some stuff from Islam, some stuff from, you know, uh, so-called Christianity, and when you go into it, pretty much all they they they, they deal with the Talmud. We don't deal with Judaism. And if Vocab Malone was a true Christian, he'd be speaking against Judaism. But Lord willing, I have a video planned on going into Judaism in that I just have to, you know, sometimes things you have to get the right timing and research. All right. To fully go into it. But I've, I've been planning on going into that. Um, it says. Uh, under Julius Caesar. OK, it was officially recognized as a legal religion. Pretty much the Jews in the Roman Empire were able to uh, be vassals and be able to keep their customs. They had to pay tribute. You had the, 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 the uh, Levites who, you know, s some of them were uh, used by the Roman Empire to be tax collectors because the, 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 the Levites dealt with the money. OK. And they were looked down upon. Matthew was a tax collector. <laughs> okay, that's why many of the Jews were like, why are you hanging with these niggas? Anyway, it says, uh, let's see here. Herod, the, uh, in the policy followed by the first Roman emperor, Augustus. Herod the Great was designated. So the, the, we never in the scripture can you go and type in Judaism. In the scriptures, our forefathers kept, you know, the uh, the laws, the traditions orally. But ultimately, you had that first covenant, which when you read the, uh, you know, the stipulations in that, you can go into the, the, the Torah, man. So get the hell out of here with that garbage. It says, Herod the Great was designated king of the Jews by the Roman Senate in 40 B.C. The Roman province of Egypt was established in 30 B.C. And Judea uh, proper, Samaria, and Idumea, biblical Edom, were com converted to the Roman province of Judea in 6 AD. And the, the uh, Romans were Edomites, but some of them were hardcore to calling themselves Romans. Some of them were calling themselves Edomites. All right, it says the Jewish Roman tensions resulted in several Jewish wars from 66 to 135 AD and in 70 AD is which when we got expelled and pretty much um, they sacked the temple. All right. But um, let's see here. Jews in Rome. Jews have lived in Rome for over 2000 years, longer than any other European city. They originally went there from Alexandria. All right. Egypt. Drawn by the lively commercial intercourse between those two cities, they may have established a community as early as second pre-Christian century. They were already there before Yahweh Shai came on the scene. All right. Uh, in 139 BC, the predator Hispanus issued a decree expelling all Jews who were not Italian citizens. Okay. But as you can see here, the Jews were in Rome. All right. Let's see here. 
It says, the Jews who were taken to Rome as prisoners were either ransomed by their uh, core religionist, all right, religionist, or set free by their Roman masters who found their peculiar customs obnoxious. obnoxious. Yeah, the, Jew, the, uh, the Jews were looked at as weirdos. Okay, the, uh, the Romans looked down upon us, and you can find that in their writings. As they write, some of their uh, historians write about all right, uh, Yahweh Shai in the Jews. And they, they, they labeled them like superstitious and weirdos. All right, but pretty much. Let's see here. Yep, the diaspora. Now, when you look up this term uh, in the book of James. <laughs> James 1 and 1. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. That term scattered abroad is a diaspora. A scattering, a dispersion, Israelites dispersed among foreign nations. That's who these letters were to. Of the followers of Yahweh scattered among the Gentiles. There you go. That's it. The diaspora. So Many of the Judean Jews were sold into slavery while others became citizens of other parts of the Roman Empire. The book of Acts is the New Testament. All right. In the New Testament, as well as other Pauline texts, make frequent references to large to the large populations of Hellenized Jews in the cities of the Roman world. Remember, all right, from the Greek captivity, which was next the Roman captivity. What happened in a Greek captivity? Jews became Hellenized. Okay? What does Hellenized mean? Just look it up. See what it says. All right? Hellenization or Hellenism is the adoption of Greek culture, religion, language, and identity by non-Greeks. Okay? Now, many heathen nations were Hellenized. But the Bible is focusing on the Hellenization of the Israelites who were in that captivity. That's where you read the book of Maccabees. Okay. To become Greek or Hellenistic, basically to take on the Greek customs. And Jake is doing that to this day. Greek fraternities getting brands, you know, bound to, to Greek idols, Roman idols and so forth. Jake is totally pagan in how they act. But see, as we always show you, these Israelites who Paul were writing to, all right, were putting off those idols. All right, 1 Corinthians 12 and 2, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. Okay, even as ye were led. Okay. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. As such were some of you, but now are ye washed, but are but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of Yahweh Shai. See, prior to Yahweh Shai coming on the scene, your only way of justification was animal sacrifice. All right, the uh, the, the the circumcision, which you should be circumcised. All right, but if you're not, the Holy Spirit can still be bestowed upon you. All right, but that's something you should want to do. But that's between you and your how about Shemiah Shai. But you had men like in the book of Acts, the 15th chapter, telling these 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 Gentiles that if they weren't circumcised, they can't be saved. OK, if you don't if you don't have this on, you can't be saved. If you don't practice this custom, you can't be saved, which caused friction. OK. Ephesians 2 and 11, wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision. That was the friction, man. OK. Ephesians 4 and 17, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. We can't walk as these niggas in the world. OK. We can't be here trying to, you know, uh, link, merge the world in the way we were in the world to now Yahweh Shai. Nah, having the, the understanding darkened.
being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. These are speaking of Israelites, but their, their understanding is darkened. They're alienated. Okay, but we, Lord willing, if we're of that number, we were in times past aliens and strangers, but now, all right, are brought into the household through Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? First Thessalonians 1 and 9, For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Okay? See that? So th these are Israelites who were scattered and dispersed among these nations, turning from these idols, point blank period, man. So you can, you know, read the rest of that, but uh, pretty much, you know, you had Israelites who were centurions, you had Israelites who were among the Roman Empire. Okay. Turning unto the Heavenly Father, man. Point blank, period. So I didn't want to take too much time, you know. Let's go back here real quick. <laughs> Let's go to Romans 1 again. All right. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God. Now, who's the beloved of the Most High? That's the Israelites. Okay, and all you have to do is go through the, 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 the whole Bible, man. Okay, Isaiah, the fifth chapter, you know, his well-beloved. All right, it's a parable. His well-beloved, okay, that he his, his, his favorite vineyard. A very fruitful hill, but when you read it, because the vineyard is speaking of the house of Israel, but when you read about what happened to the vineyard, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. Okay? Okay. And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard, which the leadership felt. And it says, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I that I have uh, not done into it? All right. Wherefore, when I looked at it, that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. And that's sim symbol symbolic of the wild olive tree who were grafted in. Is the word wild basically you're uncultivated when you're without your culture okay you're uncultivated man the word wild b-o-shim stinking or worthless wild grapes stink berries meaning it wasn't cultivated the right way and what is our what cultivates us our culture so when you read Romans 11, okay, and you, should, you read that in, in read it in the NLT. Basically, Israel is not cast away. These Gentiles or Israelites who were ultimately grafted in, and you're gonna see that word wild, wild olive tree. See, and some of the branches were broken off. All right, the Jews who didn't believe and Dow being a wild olive tree were grafted in. See, you're still an olive, but you're a wild olive. Wild, see that word in the Greek. Wild. Let's see, belonging to a wild Yep. Savage, uncultivated. See that? These are Israelites who were uncultivated. 
look up the term uncultivated. In a moral sense, boorish, rude. <laughs> look at Jake, who don't understand who they are in this world. All right? Not using grown, not highly educated or socially adept. Woo! Wait a minute. So let's look this up here real quick. And you have to have these understandings before you go read in the New Testament. You can't just read the New Testament without understanding the diaspora, without understanding what happened to the Israelites in the Greek captivity. It says, not cultivated by standard agricultural methods, socially unpolished, uncultured, unrefined, not cultivated by agricultural methods. Now, what cultivates us? Our culture, the law, statutes, and commandments. But anyway, I just wanted to get into a few things, but pretty much that's what happened. The house, the beloved of the heavenly father, Hosea 3 and 1, then said, Yahweh unto me, go yet love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress. We were that adulterous nation, cut off. We were that harlot. According to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel, all right, who looked to serve other gods and love and love flagons of wine. Jake going off, man. Hosea's second symbolic marriage. So ultimately, this is speaking of Israel, the beloved, but an adulteress. See, we became uncultivated by looking to these other gods. All right, but through faith in Yahweh Shai, we're back into that beloved estate, which David means beloved. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, show you, brothers and sisters, that um, at the water to the uh, beloved brother, you know, uh, Ayasha Moth, Mississippi. I mean, it's a, probably a lot more meat in here, pro probably a lot more research, but I just went off what I had from him. May Yahweh Bashmiah Shai bless you, brothers and sisters, and may understanding continuously uh, uh, grow. Shalom.